Hello, hello. Welcome to Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and this is Season 3, Episode 34. And today I had some technical difficulties. I only have one monitor, and uh, so I'm, I'm definitely going to need my brain today. I hope that you can all hear me well. Hi, Carol. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Tina. And Sarah and Lorinda. So I have uh, two videos already on my YouTube channel regarding bowl cozies. And I've always felt that it was kind of boring to just use a single fabric. And what else could we do with them without increasing fire risk? And if you are concerned about fire risk, know that I did do a video on everything to do with bowl cozies and cooking in the microwave. And inside of my school, create.clairowley.com, you will find a pattern. You can also find the pattern at creativefeet.com. And when you look at the pattern inside of the school, there's, there's, little inserts that you can put in with your bowl cozy should you want to give them as gifts good afternoon sarah i like your little wave hand so bear with me as without my buttons and without a monitor because my monitor fell and cracked so so i have one monitor i'm not whining there i have uh placed the links to my shop and to my school for you should you want to join and i had so many questions about bowl cozies in the last week i think everyone's starting to feel there's fall in the air and uh, maybe you're having soup instead of ice cream and wanting to warm your hands but there isn't just one size bowl or one shape bowl, considerably different shapes and sizes available. So in my pattern, I give you directions on how to size for the specific bowl that you're going to use. And I don't have a bowl cozy for this bowl, which is the bowl that I inherited from my mother, which I absolutely love. Isn't that sweet? But it has this little lip on it. I've already made some for these, which that's my go-to bowl. Do you guys have a favorite bowl? If you do, tell me about it in the, uh, in the chat. What makes the bowl your favorite bowl? Welcome back, Amy. Yes. Amy had a grandbaby was in Colorado and came back and got sick. I'm so sorry to hear that. I did get your email or your message inside of the school, Amy, and uh, she was asking about the deadline to join the Creative Feed Extensive course, which is opening at the end of this month. So I extended the deadline because I did lose my father and that caused me and I'm still, I still don't think I'm functioning at normal level yet. So because of that, I've extended that price that you can pay so if you go to create.clairowley.com you'll find the creative feed creative feed extensive there and it is uh it's much more than what you get in my creative feed workbook and two hour instructional video it is pretty much a compilation of my entire life's work of teaching and developing sewing techniques for the last 34 years it'll be actually it's 35 years <gasps> That's right. So I'm going to put a coupon in the school for those of you who don't have a membership yet. It's free to join the school and inside of there, there'll be a coupon because I completely forgot my company's anniversary is August. So 35 years, Creative Feed have been sold worldwide and always made in the USA. The Creative Feeder, oh, Tinkerbell wants to make an appearance. 
So for those of you who haven't met Tinkerbell yet, this is Tink and uh, I'll Chase. I don't know where he is right now. So the first thing we're going to need for this project is batting and fabric. And, you know, I was really on point until my monitor fell over and cracked and uh, unplugged something else that's really important, my little button thing. So I don't have my brain functioning normal. You ready to go back on your spot? Yeah. And generally we start out with a 12 inch piece of batting and fabric. So you're not gonna behave, are you? You know, this is just not the way it normally is. So you can go over there if you want. Best batting to use is the bamboo batting or polyester. And if your brain is going, wait a minute, I was told I'm I was told you're always supposed to use cotton. Know that cotton is one fiber that can actually spontaneously combust all by itself, just catch on fire. And uh, it is so flammable is why they you know have warning labels on pajamas for children to let you know that you know the the clothing is super flammable so there's somehow it got out there to use cotton to make sure you use cotton thread cotton batting and cotton fabric but that is a flawed belief and in the video and i'll put a link in the video description below after i'm done going live and today is September 15th of 2022. I will put a link to the actual video on the fire explaining all the fire stuff to you and I have several videos in the description of that video showing you the science so that you know that you're making an informed decision that you're not going to put your loved ones at risk or yourself and remember this if ever in your microwave there is ever a fire turn off the microwave and do not open the door and that there it's airtight and it just will put out the fire not that you really should expect a fire from one of these i have yet to see an actual video of an actual fire i've only seen like little burn marks on fabric now potato bags is another story Potato bags, you put a, a potato and moisten the bag and then put it in your microwave. And the three things that causes the molecules inside of a microwave to gyrate are fat, water, and sugar. So when you get a potato, which is sugar, with water and you put it in a fabric that's cotton with made with, has cellulose in it, which is another form of sugar, and then water, you're really creating an environment that is more likely to catch fire than than uh, what we're going to do today, which is just to make a, a cozy for a bowl. So you, you guys are giving each other a hard time, those of you who are not in here yet. I would expect nothing less from you all. Why do they make square rulers 11 inch? I wish they were 12. It's like all of my square rulers are, are 11 inch. Do you guys have that too? Look at your rulers. Tell me, are your square rulers all 11? Wouldn't you think they should go 12 inch? If you think they should be 12 inch, write a 12 in the chat for me so that I know you're agreeing with me. Today I have my cutter pillar pad on top of my table without the light tablet just because i'm not going to need the light tablet for today's lesson and i thought you might like to see how nice it looks to use it on just your regular surface because it's clear it takes on the color so if you have a purple if your table is purple you'll have a purple pad So I'm going to go ahead and cut myself a couple. Now this is the, this is a thicker batting than we're offering at Creative Feet right now. I accidentally grabbed the wrong batting. I 
it in reach. Don't want to misrepresent and use a different batting. My whole studio was set up for voiceover because I'm doing voiceover for my book, which will soon be published. And that's a novel, not a sewing book. Called Beyond the Brush Strokes. So that's partly why I ended up having problems because I disconnected some things to connect new technology. So this is the traditional 100% bamboo batting available at creativefeet.com. And since this bowl is not I don't think it's going to need, I don't think it needs an actual 12 inch square, but I'm going to go ahead and give it, it just because I'm going from memory. If you want to iron on your light tablet, you use the glass, the tempered glass over the top of it, Robin. And welcome. I see you made it today. And last week you didn't get a, a notification. You said... Robin, so it may be because you're not subscribed to YouTube to get notifications and you're getting notified through the school instead. So basically, I want to add, I want to make this a, a 12 inch square. Ugh. I'm just gonna see can I draw on this I do need a marker to draw on batting today and another thing another rumor out there is that sharpie markers can catch on fire in your microwave because it's an alcohol pin but remember alcohol evaporates and then it's no longer flammable so I'm just going to kind of guess at that being a one inch and then come here. And I used the Sharpie for all of my bowl cozies. Are you guys hearing me okay today? Because my microphone is back on the table. And I have it off to the side a little bit. So I don't know why you didn't get notified last week. I've been, I'm a member of other people's YouTube channels and their viewers have been saying the same thing, that they're not getting notified. And oddly, last week, it was one of my highest viewed videos in a long time. So I really, really love this mat just for cutting as well as using with the light tablet. Uh, it would also be advisable if you're going to cut and just use the you know a single layer of fabric and I I thought I brought a bowl cozy in the room but apparently I didn't so if you're just going to use one piece of fabric you may as well cut the fabric and the battings out at the same time See, <laughs> this ruler was broken. Yeah, so I did do that right. So we're going to start out with a square and we're going to end up with a round bowl cozy.
and I got a, I'm gonna build on top of it a pattern using the quilt as you go method. So in essence, just gonna create a square piece of fabric, but I'm gonna build it on one layer of batting. So you have the option then to use this as a solid and then have just one side be quilted. It's up to you. And uh, I'll be on, I'm limited on time on these lives, so we'll see how far I get. You're just going to keep getting in the way, aren't you? I'm going to play around with the jelly roll that I have. Can you stay in your spot, please, pink? I so appreciate it. It's always, to me, a little exciting and a little sad to unroll a jelly roll. And last week, I did show you how you can do quilt as a, quilting as you go using jelly rolls that have pinked edges. This is one that does not have pinked edges, and I wish they would be all would be made this way. But it was super exciting to show you how you can do the quilting as you go and still get a two inch piece with the satin edge foot bringing your seam allowance down to a smaller seam allowance and you can see here that that fabric was pinked all right so now a whole new jelly roll to figure out which which Ooh, i really like this one but I saw one with hearts, I thought. Are you guys hearing me okay? Thumbs up if you're hearing me okay. You lost the chat completely. Darn it, Tina. I don't know, those angry faces. I hope YouTube doesn't think it's that you're mad at me. I'm not sure if that affects the algorithm or not. This looks like, they made it look like it has burns on it. So if you if you use a fabric that looks like it's burnt, remember that when you use it as a bowl cozy so you don't think you had a fire when you didn't. I think I'm going to skip that fabric just because of that. Show you it on the close-up camera so you can see what I'm talking about. See, it looks burnt. That would be... Gary. Okay, let's see what, what else we have in here. Oh, it looks like all of the reds have that. But this is the only one that doesn't look burnt. I know I would not think it's burned because but just in case I show it to someone, I don't want them to think it's burned. You don't have a jerry roll? <laughs> Ayoko, you can cut your own jelly rolls. Just You just cut a bunch of strips that are two and a half inches. Okay. Just cut them two and a half inches wide but they're called jelly rolls, like you spread jelly on your roll. And we're gonna start out with right side up. This one also has that burnt look. This one's fun. Have any of you ever made a bowl cozy using a quilted fabric before? If you have, say something, tell me. The more active you are in the chat, the more YouTube and Facebook think you're having a good time with me. 
These are fun. Whoopsie. <gasps> My first whoopsie in a while. Tinkerbell, you need to just let go somewhere. She's standing at my feet, looking up at me. That's when you want to know what the dog is thinking. Won't that be pretty, you guys? Of course, you could just repeat with two fabrics as well. Instead of having a variety. I'm not sure how much of this or how it's going to look, though. If we're even going to like it for this. There's only one way to find out if we like something. Is to try and make it. What, Tink? What do you want, puppy? What's going on is Chase ate her food earlier. And I had to put him outside, and she still hasn't eaten because she's she's that way. So now she's hungry. Now that I'm in here, do you guys have dogs that have bad timing? <laughs> so what do you guys do? You guys like this combination? Give me a thumbs up if you do. And I got to get all this out of the way. I'm going to try to position this one so the burnt part doesn't show up. And it looks like I'm going to need just a little bit on, on each corner. We'll see. She's laying down at my feet. Now I'm folding them because they're too long and just kind of laying them in the order I'm going to stitch them out. So I don't slow down. Starting with this one in the middle, so I'm going to leave it. And now determining which side is right and which side is wrong is done by stretching across the grain. And this is the selvage, so this is across the grain. So this is the selvage, this is across the grain. So when I stretch it, you can see it stretches and it, it kind of concaves and it hugs the wrong side. So as you stretch, see how it creates that little bump? So that tells me this is the right side of the fabric. The right sides together and I'm always trying not to waste fabric but you want to make sure that if you were to bring this over that it would stick out past the batting it's so weird not having my extra monitor the thread I'm going to use is 100% polyester that may sound weird to you Especially if you're coming in late and aren't aware. That cotton is extremely flammable. If you look it up, go, you know, what's the most flammable fabric? And part of the confusion comes from polyester. If you were to have a house fire and you were wearing a polyester garment, well, polyester melts so when it gets heated and it must have a fire come at it it doesn't catch fire all by itself so it has to there has to be a fire somewhere else and it comes over to the polyester the heat itself will cause the polyester to liquefy as it is a polymer and and then it drips so if you have polyester clothing on and you get caught in a fire you get more severe burns than you do if you have cotton clothing, but cotton is faster to ignite than the polyester. So all this fire talk sounds a little scary, but I didn't start it. Somebody else started it. I'm just helping you understand so you can make an informed decision. And I, I'm going to change my thread to a color that's 
that matches better. Right now I have green, light green thread in. What's on your sewing table, you guys? Let me guess what's on Brenda's table. <laughs> You're taking out gathering stitches from a pink. Oh, God. A little batting fuzz just went in my eye. I think I'm going to use a, a, like, a little, maybe I'll use a mauve pink-ish. It really doesn't matter. I'm being way too particular about it. Bowl cozy. Mostly because I may do something else on it. Have a little bit more fun. If time allows. So I have a question for you guys. I was thinking about auctioning off some of my painted sewing machines. Would you be interested in participating in an auction to purchase one of the painted sewing machines? If so, go ahead and tell me about it in the chat because I need to fund some things and it would be a way for us to generate some funds to do that, to bring you more stuff. So let's see if I can find a bobbin that matches in my wonderful master bobbin set. I think I'll use a pink. These are the Deco Bobs. This is a 80 weight thread. And what I'm using is the Invisifil thread in the needle. And that's simply because it was on my stand. You could use any way of the polyester for this. There isn't going to be any stretch or stress put against or... The bowl cozy itself won't be stretched, so you don't have to worry about the thread breaking as much, which would be a reason to not use. Actually, this is not Invisifil, is it? No, this is Polyfast. And if you want to know what, which one it is, it's number 1081, and it is a really pretty lavender-ish color. Kind of a pinky a mauve but leaning more towards purple. I'm in a purple mood today. So now I want to set my foot and you really don't have to use a quarter inch seam allowance on this because we're just doing a quilt as you go project. There isn't a hard and fast rule about your seam allowance. Most importantly is that you maintain the same seam allowance and that still doesn't matter when you're working with a quilt as you go project like this, this particular style of quilt as you go. I'm seeing if I can't give you a bigger view on this camera. One second. That's better for me. I don't know if it's better for you. So the bamboo batting is very high, has a high level of static cling. And so the bottom fabric is, is held pretty well against the batting and is unlikely to slip. However, if you're concerned about it slipping, you can use the liquid base glue to hold it in place, putting a couple drops beneath that edge and go all the way down so that it doesn't move on you. But as I said, this is a very relaxing, great starter project because there really isn't any hard and fast seam allowances or anything. But now there is a risk of these two fabrics slipping as you sew with any foot and to eliminate that, you can go ahead and do the same thing. Just a, if 
about every three inches just put a little drop of our liquid based which is water soluble stabilizer in a bottle put your lid back on and then I slide my finger across just to lightly spread out the little dots and make them more of a smear that makes it dry quicker now I can take and place my fabric with right sides together using a measuring tape to achieve a perfect accurate quarter inch <laughs> if you can't tell the front from the back you know it actually does affect the behavior of the sewing machine needle and anything that it that hinders so if the fabric does in fact concave on the wrong side and you alternate it when up doing this method it probably wouldn't be noticeable at all but if you were to sew these strips together without the batting you be you might have a little issue with stitch quality so wrong sides together right sides together or glue and then you don't have to worry so I'm using my left needle position this is September 15th of 2022 and I am live right now. If you're not in the live chat, you're seeing this on the replay. Be paying attention to everything that I say because at the end of this video, I'll be giving away a book called Stupendous Stitching by Carol Ann Waugh. And apparently I don't have the book in here. It is autographed by Carol, and I will be autographing it as well for the winner. As the inventor of the foot used in the, the book. So what I'm going to do now is place my needle on one of the marks on a measuring tape and then move the guide over to the quarter inch mark. And unlike any other foot with a guide, this has a, a pin that sticks out from the white part of the guide. Do not confuse this with the sewing machine's blind hem foot. There are lots of differences between this and other feet. So placing the guide wire on the line and the needle on the other line and that's it. Then that, that seam allowance will not change or, or, or shift on you as long as you don't grab in front and behind the foot and stretch or distort your fabric. We always want to keep our eye focused on the front of the foot and make sure there's no space between the fabric's edge and the white guide. Sorry, I'm trying to get my foot to my book pedal. There's something getting underneath it. Sorry about that, you guys. Come on, foot control. I like my foot control to be sideways. Do you guys use your foot control straight or do you use it sideways? And when you use your foot control, do you use, do you wear shoes or no shoes? I have to take my shoes off. Even when it's cold, I tend not to sew as well with my shoe on. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mike. I'm glad you got your package. So I'm gonna go ahead now and reverse and gently pushing toward the foot. Put pressure at the lightest setting. And then I don't have to really think too much, just making sure there's, there's no gap between the fabric and the guide. I did design this foot for a woman who was born blind and deaf, and that's why it works like this. I didn't glue perfect on the end. Am I the only sideways foot control sewer? <laughs> no shirt, no... What is that song? So now you can see that the seam allowance is... They're sewn together, it's accurate quarter inch all the way down. And then I take and 
bring my fabrics over and pull at a diagonal using one of my pressers. You can use an iron if you if you like. I prefer to not use my iron unless I absolutely have to. Whoops, I just dropped that presser. Good thing I got another one handy. <laughs> That's because I got too much in my little presser holder. So it's overflowing. It would have landed right in my little presser holder. I didn't I had way too much stuff in here. It's supposed to be just for your rolling around things so they don't fall on the floor. These are the large Appliquick scissors that take away the pressure and strain on your... How do you guys like your scissors, those of you who have them? These are the large ones. These are the ones I use to snip across jelly rolls. It's the perfect length for that. Next fabric. I had it all organized. That's where I wanted the polka dot. It doesn't matter. Seems pretty consistent. There we go. Now for those of you wondering if you have to use the glue, I, I'm going to do this row without it. Hi, Ellen. How are you feeling? I'm going... Long time no chat. It's really important before you sew your next strip that it is pressed and laying flat because you're going to be attaching it to the batting. So if you have a, a bubble or anything or it isn't flat, well, it's going to be stitched that way. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And I'm not pushing down or applying any downward pressure. I'm gently encouraging the fabric to stay against the guide so I don't have to use my eyesight, which allows me to look at your beam scissor. <laughs> you have a beam scissor? What's a beam scissor? We also have a, a lower priced version of the serrated scissors, should you not be able to afford the Appliquick brand. The uh, uh, Karen K. Buckley scissors. So this is still to date my favorite, I think my favorite of all the wood. I tend to lean toward green colors. Next one. So I like, why one of the reasons I like batiks is because even though this is the same fabric, now there's a segment where it has more orange, so it can be utilized or used to kind of look like a different fabric altogether. This one almost looks identical. I want a little bit more of a dramatic difference. I thought I had it all laid out. Does that look as good next to that? Here I am hungry again. It doesn't matter, Claire. It's just a bowl cozy. Oh, another lighted object, kind of like our lighted handle for the 
rulers. So you can pair that up with your lighted suction cup ergonomic handle. And know that I didn't have to hand fold it like this to use it. I'm able to just set my hand on top. This thumb has been injured for months. It's just starting to, it still has a little snap to it. Of course, if I just didn't work, it would probably be healed by now. So full speed is something I can do because I'm confident. If it makes you nervous, don't. Go slower. If you're new to my channel, welcome and be sure to subscribe. If you are enjoying the video, be sure to hit the like button and join my free online school, create.clairowley.com. Next orange one. I am sure I had it all laid out. Oh, that's right. I wasn't sure how big of a piece I was going to need. This is the one that has, looks like little hearts, but it's already there. This is, I think, my favorite of the bunch. We always have to have a favorite. Which one's your favorite of these, you guys? Do you like these colors together? If my thumb didn't work at all, I would go crazy. Yes. It's almost better, you guys. So excited. I think that's why you're saying that. I don't know. Sure is nice to be able to go fast on your seam allowances, though, isn't it, you guys? Happy Thursday, everybody. Whoops. Hit the wrong button. And Brenda, I didn't get your stuff out last week. I'm so sorry. I was like, I know she got something else, and it's just been... <sighs> tell you. I won't forget August and September of 2022. I finally remembered it. You got the jelly roll. I'm like, I got your quilt highlights sitting there and i'm like she got something else what else did she get and every time i would go to look in the email something happened and distracted me and this is really unnecessary i should just wait <laughs> oh i just i'm really liking this I should not have just used this for a jelly roll. I could have made something bigger, like a quilt. So nice. I don't know. I used to be more teal, and I'm leaning a lot toward orange this year. So all the seam allowances are going that direction on this side, and now for this half, they'll all face the opposite direction. Does anybody have any idea what the color orange, why I might be attracted to orange this year? Since we get a little bit metaphysical in here from time to time. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Don't push down on the fabric. I was quiet for so long. Oh, that's right. I remember you love orange. I made you a special presser out of a secret piece of wood that no one even knows I had. I remember.
it is a good idea if you do have a favorite color and you don't see it in a selection of the presser colors to email me and see what I might have because if I can't get a wood in bulk I just I may or I may have it and be wishing I could make it for someone and those of you who, who don't know that I make these I do I turn these on a wood on a wood lathe <laughs> on a lathe <laughs> now I'm picturing a wooden lathe So this is foundation style of quilting as you go. And I am deliberately not backing the fabric because we're going to turn this into a bowl cozy. And bowl cozies are sewn in a manner in which you put right sides together. Or pretty sure. It's been so long been two years since I made a bunch of bowl cozies, but boy, it was a great present to give everyone. I think everyone in my family that I gave them to is still using them. But if theirs are starting to look like mine, I'll bet they would all enjoy a new one for this Christmas. Whoops. I got a bunch of stuff in my way. I can't see the buttons. I really like these fabrics in case I didn't say it so let's see what would you like me to do next week each week I'm getting a little bit closer to feeling myself again I had somebody mention buttonholes being something they're challenged with and that is one of the techniques in the dress design from Farmhouse Fabrics. So this is the fabric that I have, some, some gingham. And uh, this, this dress has a bunch of buttonholes down it and has some pleats. So, and, and pockets to put on so there's a several different techniques that I could cover in this and maybe not make the entire dress but at least cover some of the techniques what do you guys think would you be interested in that being next week's fabrically speaking live give me a thumbs up tell me you do or tell me what you'd really like me to do Make sure your thread is always underneath the foot and to the left, or it might not sew. Ooh, my thread is getting wrapped around my bottom winder again. Something else, another thread has in, gotten joined in on the thread dispenser. Now I'm like, ah, oh, this took a while. Thank you, Amy. How many grandkids do you have? I think you have an enormous number. What, 12 or 13? Zipper with jeans. Your zipper broke. Nancy Zeman had this way of cutting off your zipper. And leaving it stitched somehow, which I thought was really interesting. That's that's one way to go about it. That's that's how bad, <laughs> how uh, challenged people feel about zippers. If Nancy Zeman were to, the way she did it, so you might want to look it up. Look up Nancy Zeman's old uh, YouTube channel. I don't know if it's still out there. I would imagine there's still. It's still there, so look up her technique for replacing your zipper. <laughs> this batting, Mary, is the bamboo batting that we offer at creativefeet.com. And I tested all the battings in the microwave. 
I sewed all cotton, wool, silk, all different types of battings together in a strip. Kind of like these are all sewn together. And then I put them in the microwave and I then I wetted some and put them in the microwave. I cooked for five minutes and after all that I put the batting through, uh, froze, put them in the freezer, took them back out, put them back in the oven. I was like, what else would people maybe do with one of these bowl cozies? And of all the battings, this the bamboo was the one that looked the best when it was all said and done. Isn't that just so lovely? I really like this. This is going to be my new favorite bowl cozy. So here's the thing. I can make both sides pieced or I can have one side solid. And since we're limited on time, I'm going to try to find a fabric to use as the back or the inside or the outside, whichever side it ends up being that I see more of this. Is that too purpley? What do you guys think? You like that? Oh, it's so pretty. No wonder I bought this. Well, I'm going to give you a bigger look at that. Do you think that goes? What else do I have? I'm just not going to overthink it. I like that a lot. You like that a lot? I like that a lot. I would not mind seeing this on the other side. What do you know? Everyone agrees. Or I really need to iron this unless I have a side that doesn't need ironing. Iron? What is the word? I'm not going to waste fabric just to not iron. So turn the iron on. This would be a nice fabric to change this out to. And I don't know where my glass is. I hit it from my toe because my toe kept hitting. I kept finding that glass, tempered glass, that you can put all over your your mats and iron on. I keep turning this light on. Oh, the batting. Rather than ironing this whole piece of fabric, I'm just going to make sure that I've got enough. It's one thing I love about these serrated scissors. They make stripping or sliding the scissors across lovely they, you don't end up with a bunch of shreds can you imagine me at Christmas wrapping presents
Oh, I didn't get the iron ready. <laughs> May as well iron both. Oh, I got the iron behind a bunch of stuff. Okie dokie. Oh, it's just it makes my heart happy to see this. So, what was I going to say? I could take the time right now and do some extra stitching. If it were a placemat, I probably would. But since it's just a bowl cozy, I don't have to worry about it. And I don't have to worry about the batting shifting at all because I've stitched it to it. Now on this one, because it's a solid, I'm going to do some stitching to anchor the batting to the fabric, which is recommended on in every other situation. Oh, the silver ironing board. I have one of those. It is on my ironing board, my full-size ironing board, which I I'm almost never get out because unless I have to iron a huge piece of fabric. Now I'm going side to side across the stitching as I iron. This would be pressing, just lifting and moving. And you can go ahead and you can shoot steam through to get it really nice and crisp. All right, so I did something deliberately so that you would learn. I mentioned before that you needed to make sure your fabric was flat because if you didn't, you would end up with a pucker. Now I got to find it. I thought I left one in there. Oh, there it is. So there's a little bit of a, of a pleat. Hard to see. And that is because it was there because I didn't iron. <laughs> in case you didn't notice, I didn't iron any of my jelly roll before I started because I'm Claire. Whoops, forgot which camera was on. It's so much harder without my little buttons. I'm going to look a little bit. Spam showing up. We got a uh, troll. <laughs> I need to go on. Oh boy. It's been so long since I've had to do this. How do I report them? Well, that's so small. Don't you guys want to date? what else get them out of that chat altogether Oof. Oh, they should let you delete that oh well I have banned them. They are banished. Oh, 
hopefully oh good I can remove I can remove it with my cell phone you guys shouldn't see it anymore I unfortunately get to see that so now I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up since my batting is cut square I can rely on it and I'm gonna use my handy dandy clamp light is what it's called you'll find it under tools at creativefeet.com that goes it's showing up in my how weird the weirdest thing you can still see it it's actually showing up like my next comment is gonna be their post where they're getting good at this am I not able to I'm not able to uh, I'm not able to comment I can't comment. I can't delete their thing out of my next comment. Wow. It's like view deleted message. Report. Well, when I reported that one, it went away, it looks like. They're getting really sophisticated. I still have no way to comment. I'm glad it wasn't worse. <laughs> I can't type in there. That's so weird. Oh, <laughs> I forgot my my uh, keyboard's battery, and I had it turned off so that my battery lasted. <laughs> there is my. Oh, now it's all capitalized. That's my shop. If any of you are interested in picking up one of the clamp lights or the satin edge foot, which is what I was using, and Ayako asked what measurement or what machine settings I used for this. And that is just a straight stitch left needle position. And I did use my measuring tape to align the guide on the foot so that it was so that it is in line I have to like make sure that I don't have my there's this little tabby thing let me show you there's this little tab sticking out on that side and my ruler is narrower than because this is my favorite ruler so make sure you don't do that and then go ahead and cut because you'll cut your little tabby thing right off So I'm going to use it backwards just so I don't have to, just so I don't have to put my hands on the ruler and I can keep using my favorite ruler. It has more to do with my limited space and I have a pile of fabric right there right now. So I use this straight stitch I echo and left needle position and the, the length of the stitch, I just left it two and a half. 
uh, millimeter stitch length, which is the standard or the automatic setting for my sewing machine. And pretty much all of you, if you have a computerized machine, your machine will default to a two and a half millimeter stitch length. If you have a machine that does not have a computer and you have just a regular stitch length and stitch width dial, you would go between halfway between two and three. If you have a machine that doesn't have one, one, two, three, instead it has, you know, all these different uh, numbers next to it. That is the equivalent of, it's been a while since I've had to say it, 12 stitches per inch. So you turn on the light and then you can see if you're in a space where you don't have good light. Before I pull up my ruler, I pull the fabric off to make sure I cut it well. And there's a couple spots that didn't. Mostly because I have overused this mat. I don't know how many years old the mat is either. And you'll see I cut at an angle and that is just, just I don't have to get up off my chair. Does that make me sound lazy? So it would be good for you to cut, you know, with the lines if you need it. But when I don't need the lines on the mat, I cut diagonally. And you can see I pull and I there's a couple spots. And I think it's that my blade is damaged. And how do I know it's my blade? Because it's the same distance on there. Same spot, see? Time for me to start carrying rotary, rotary blade replacements. Are any of you going to make bowl cozies for gifts this year? Even if you've given them before, I would anticipate that they'll be worn out and your family members or loved ones will be very happy to get a new one. I should stop pulling it and just run it across twice. Madeline, you're in the live today. So welcome to the live. Are you having, you're in the comments or you wouldn't have made that comment just now. So I think you usually pop in after I've already ended my show. Robin, your auto-correct wrote O factory cutter <laughs> instead of instead of Ulfa cutter. That's so funny. You've never made a bowl cozy before? Oh man, I love mine. I made smaller ones and I use them for my coffee cups. And now we'll see how square I did. <laughs> oh, I'm so hungry. There I go again. Whiny Thursdays with Claire. 
how'd I do that? Perfection eventually. And this reminds me, there's something that we need when we make one of these. Come on, my eyes just got, I got a big piece of batting in my eye. It's like this thing. Oh, it says I hit it. All right, what do I do? Do you guys remember what I do? You need a new lid for your teacups. Ooh. I'm going to give you something pretty to look at and go get a bowl cozy to help me finish. Give you the song. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That's how I've done that before. Be right back. I absolutely love the coffee cup one and I stitched down the corner of all my bowl cozies to give me a better grip so that you're less likely to lose hold of what it is that you have. This is a perfect one for my little bowl. This is the one I ended up making for this low low profile wider bowl cuz you don't want it being too big and coming over so if i were to use this one 
for that bowl while it's too big. Then you can carry it and your edges could end up inside of your bowl. I believe this is the size for this bowl. And this is a nine and a half inch or 10 inch square. So I tend to use this bowl the most. So I'm gonna make it for this bowl. And what you do is you measure across the back. So you would go, uh, go across, and this is how you would determine the size that you want. You wanna make sure that it's at least double the width of the bowl. And then you go, okay, how tall is this bowl? And that would be from the surface to the top. So it's a two to two inch height bowl. And that determines what we're gonna do next. Come on, Claire, you can remember. I was gonna watch my own video before I went live today. Oh yeah, I gotta not forget. I gotta stitch this one first. So whenever we have, as I mentioned before, whenever you have a solid piece of fabric, you need to attach with stitching that to the batting. You could use the liquid base to stop it from shifting on you. I'm using a very light pressure and I have a lavender color thread in. You could fold your fabric in half and press it so that you have a line, but I know how I know how little it matters <laughs> if it's straighter. I mean, it's so difficult to see your stitching when you have the bowl inside of it. So my eye is not focused on the foot. I'm focused right here, heading in that direction, just like when you want to hit a golf ball. You don't look at the ball, you look where you want the ball to go. I say that like I golf. <laughs> I have golf clubs, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So you don't really need a lot. See how nice that stitch looks? It's, it's a beautiful stitch. And it is two and a half millimeter stitch long. You can go longer on your stitch length, but the longer your length, the more likely you are to get a little pucker. This is zero or one pressure on the foot. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see when I lift this up, it's very light, easy to lift up. That's the foot pressure. The presser foot pressure. <laughs> so now my eye is focused down in the center of the stitching line. This is the cross mark. And you could draw a cross mark right there. Remember, I already have two pre-recorded videos on Bowl Cozies for your review. See how little I held that? And even though I didn't do anything to make it not shift, there's no pucker at that cross, at that junction. Fabric lays beautifully flat. That has a lot to do with the fact that I make my feet out of a scientific plastic. The plastic used for the creative feet makes them glide on the fabric surface much better than metal feet. When I first designed the creative feet, they were metal, but they were breaking. The screws were falling out. So while sometimes metal seems stronger, it isn't always the best option. Come on, Claire, remember how to do this. Can I remember? Oh, if only my buttons were working, my brain would work better.
Now's when I really like my itty bitty ruler. If I can find it. Wow. So what did I say? I said it's the two inch depth bowl. So we're going to come up Oh, they have these little stickers on there. So on the, I'm I'm going from memory. <laughs> One, two, two inches up. And then if I were doing the the higher bowl one that is deeper from the bottom to the top. I would go over three inches, but since my bowl is shallower, I'm gonna go two inches to two inches, and then take the ruler and go across and draw a line across. Now there are people that have you actually cut that before sewing. It's not as easy for the sewing machine to do that. Now we're going to come on to the next side. And I'm pretty sure. That I have you flip it over. <laughs> Any of you know my bowl cozy pattern really well and can tell me if I'm right. We also want to mark in between where we don't want to stitch around, but that's not what we're doing yet. Oh, I know what I, oh, I almost, am I doing it wrong? No. So I'm having to think. You make the darts in the centers. I feel like this was the next thing that I did. <laughs> I don't want to ruin this. And I just need to take a second to refresh my memory. So I think what I'm going to do is grab my pattern so that you can see the pattern as well and I'll give you the music and I will be right back one more time. So while I could look at my video, I can't when I'm live because it'll crash the show. It's sometimes it's just better. The song is still playing. It shouldn't be. Okay. All right, so. Sometimes a printed pattern is a lot better <laughs> than having to look for the video again. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm remembering something to that effect, to, to doing the folding it 
Oh, and that's where I sew it. I do this. I go across this way. Right? Am I remembering correctly, you guys? Give me a yes if it's a yes. That makes more sense because I remember this. And inside the pattern, I give you labels to give your loved ones so they know how to care for it so they don't have any risk of catching fire. Everything is illustrated. Yes. So there is the reference. This is how to cut it for the different size bowls. Every step I illustrate instead of photographs because it's easier for your brain to understand a drawing sometimes. This is one of those times when a drawing is best. And you can see that I recommend that you clip it. So I will do what I recommend. It's rare I tell you to do something and there isn't a reason for it. These are the clips that we offer. These are like medium size. We want to keep these from shifting. Another thing that you want to do that a lot of people don't realize is that when you fold it like this, you have to look inside here and make sure that it there isn't that it isn't like folded down. The fabric is separated from the batting. Now it's like this piece of fabric is going to disappear. All that sewing for nothing. And I and I had had that drawn on the wrong, the wrong corner. So two inches up because of the size bowl. A dot and two inches over. And then I have, so I, I went two inches up, two inches over, and drew the line. And I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing on this side. The reason I do that is because it's easier to sew it this way. Make sure that's folded in there. It's been so long. This, this ruler has too many lines. <laughs> wow, it's right on that stitching line, so I don't even need to draw the line. That whole strip that I sewed on is just going to be chopped off or stitched in. I quilted as I... quilted... quilted as I go <laughs> the pieces. And now I'm going to make them into a bowl cozy. <laughs> All right, I'm, I gotta stop reading the chat. Normally I'm quicker, you guys, but my clicker won't work today. So if I chop that off, then the foot had the foot will be tipped on the side. So instead I put it on top and I start with the foot on the fabric and you can line up the guide wire and the, the guide with the needle so that you have the guide to refer to. A couple stitches forward, then I go back. I want to have a good, a good strong in the, the guide went into the batting. If you have your foot, if your sewing machine hesitates, you can increase your stitch length.
zoom in. Yes, without the clips, it's a lot more challenging. So we've created one of the sections that you see here. And that's what determines the depth of the bowl. So if it's not deep enough, then you would have wanted to have gone over three inches. I think I actually went down shorter. That's all right. I can make another one. We have to do this again now. Am I right? Four sides. Four darts. Right. I was going to make one before I went live. Learning voiceover is a challenge. If you, you don't want to change your mind in the middle, this is another thing that I like to use is the ruler to make sure that that fabric is flat in there. My eyes just have a hard time with this ruler. Too many. They could have made some darker lines. So it's almost on the stitching line. For the pin's sake, I shouldn't do what I'm doing. But. You'll find the pattern, which remember includes all the different size bowls inside of creativefeet.com. See, if I did it the other way, I wouldn't have just taken the clip off. Once again, bring that ruler in there. Make sure it's flat. Two over, two and two is what I'm doing for this particular bowl. And I'm using the guide along the side of the line, not riding over it. So my needle is lined up with the line perfectly. So I'm not having to watch the needle. Chase is making an appearance. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side and that's gonna be probably the side I use for the bowl to go into because then I'll be able to see more of it. I don't know, you'll have to help me decide. We're going to do the exact same measurement. Take that in there. Once again, Instead of just spinning it around and marking this side, you're going to flip it instead. Make sure you're lined up there and then Come on, brain. We can do this one, two. Okay. 
One, two. What are you guys having for dinner? It's that hour where I'm starting to get hungry. I went a little bit longer than I am trying to keep it at an hour. But you know what? I'm going to have a new bowl cozy to have to use tonight. So flipping over. And that's all about how the machine sews. It sews better this way. I wait to cut my tails off till I put my two pieces together and confirm that everything is right. Check twice. Ooh, manicotti. I know how to make that. I was taught by a Sicilian when I was a younger girl how to make manicotti. You don't have to eat dinner if you don't want to. I want to eat dinner. Oh, goodness. These lines. Always confirming. You don't want to have to rip out stitches. Bring in the edges together. This will be the fanciest bowl cozy I've ever made. Come on, Claire. Yeah, Robin frequently misses the live also, and you're in here as well. You're eating leftovers? What kind of leftovers, Lorinda? Maybe Brenda and I both can get an idea off of you guys. I neglected to eat lunch. I did make myself a, a, a drink, though. Not a, not a drink drink, a, a vitamin drink-ish. Dr. Gundry vegetable kind of thing. And it's sitting beside me. That could bring up my blood sugar. I'm feeling a little bit. I'm going to take a sip. One second. I, uh, I save my Starbucks cups and use them. <laughs> Fruit salad and a chai tip sandwich. That's a combination. Summery combination. Summer's not over yet, but it's almost over, right? I always think of hats. <laughs> and I like to kind of see that it's going to fit before I chop off my points. Just in case my brain wasn't working right. Chicken pot pie. Ugh. I can see that that's perfect and that's perfect all right 
Well, I could have, I didn't backstitch on this one, so I'm going to backstitch. Don't want it coming off or opening up in the final stages. I was probably talking too much when I did that. You can use another kind of marker. You don't have to use Sharpie. <laughs> this is handy. It's not got Sharpie fingers. Now, of the three Apoclick scissors, it's the, the larger ones that I'll use. And instead of just cutting, I'm going to come closer here than on that side. And this will make it easier later. Save your little, your little butterflies. Once again, coming, coming from quarter inch, going to like a sixteenth inch, keeping the batting in the deeper part of the scissor, not going up to the tip. You don't want to bend them. The smaller cuts is better for this scissor, or use a bigger scissor which I should be doing. But I carried my Kai scissors off somewhere. So I'm just going to be ginger with them. Where did I take my Kai scissors to? Egg noodles, beef stroganoff. Try not to eat too much pasta. So are you guys feeling the urge, more of an urge to sew lately? Is the, is the season about to change, making you feel a little bit more like sewing? I know a lot of us don't have children in school anymore, but does back to school affect you? Tell me if it does. I love my kite scissors too. I love them all. Now what I'm going to do is take my little bat wings or butterfly wings and stack them and this is going to become a crutch for the foot for the next part that's probably enough and I'm just going to stitch across to keep them from coming apart <laughs> Go all the way to the end here. Oops, I'm backwards. Here we go. It is also National Sewing Month. So now this is something that I'll keep up on the machine for the next part. I'm almost done, you guys. Yay. And then according to the pattern, we bring these in to one another and we want to do right sides together. Once again, I'm going to use the clips. It works better if you tuck them in get those corners lined up with each other and we want to mark want to mark an area where we're not going to 
so all the way around and not at a point and not at a at a V but in between so these are the this enough room to turn it right side out but I also tend to use my these other clips these kind of warn me the red what are these called I don't like them as much as the clip it clips these are harder on your hands but they because they're red and they're different size than the other ones I tend to notice them as I come around anything we can do to help our brain and I do tend to clip in the corner and the point wonder clips yeah They're like five times more expensive than these as well. And the clip it clips have quarter inch, eighth inch marks on there. Much easier on your much easier on your hands. So the quarter inch mark is there. It's great for binding, putting things on where you have to make sure they're lined up uh, with a quarter inch distance. They're also good for working with the binding using the liquid based glue because the clips are so long they go past the glue line. All right, now I'm ready to go around. Unless I'm doing it wrong, any of you, any of you that have made one before, give me my forewarning now if I have spaced something out. I want to start where my little warning clip is and I'm going to pull it off because I know that's where I'm going to start. And this crutch goes beneath the foot and on the right hand side to support, to support the foot because it has that screw assembly and it can tip. And I don't want a, qu a quarter inch seam allowance right now because when we turn this right side out, it's going to be like a French seam. We're going to have to go beyond it. So I'm going to move my needle over to the left, but I'm going to move the guide in a little bit. So just shy of a little bit. It's about a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch. Definitely go forward and reverse. Come down to the point, stop with the needle down, lift and pivot. And you're gonna you're gonna see that the crutch just sits there. And it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. Very handy. Making sure everything's nice and flush. Keeping the fabric up against the white part of the guide. I'll slide this down so you can see better. Again, stop with the needle down. Even though you've made a lot of bowl cozy, you still learn something new. You know, I used to try to save my crutch, but it seems like every time I need a crutch, I've had to cut something off. You'll know that I normally say leave the needle up. This is when, when sewing a straight stitch, I, I don't have that rule. It's zigzag stitching and free motion where I like to have the needle stop in the up position. Get under there, crutch. Um, to the point. Get to the point. Get to the point, Claire. Lower the... Nope, not yet. Lower the needle. Okay. 
I used to have a lot. I used to have more bowl closes. I don't know what happened to them. I'm like, have I been letting people take them home with them? I might have. And by the way, when you wash these with the bamboo batting, you can wash and dry it. But then you'll need to like take it to the iron and press it. But the batting is still just as thick as it was because it's bamboo, not cotton. Cotton batting will rot and decay and disappear out of your gar out of your item. Stop the needle down. So here's the thing: I, usually you're told to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance and then cut it down afterward. But because the satin edge put keeps you, you know, helps you sew accurate along the edge of thick items like this, you don't have to worry about it. Have you guys ever given away a bowl cozy that you that you made for yourself? So we shouldn't just call these bowl cozies because they're also coffee cup mug warmers as well. Whoops. Get over here, crutch. If I remember correctly. The last bowl cozy I made, I found the pearls and piping foot worked best for the last step. Coming up to the end, you guys. You put them in the window in the closet. I have a china cabinet. Yeah, I like to keep them on display as well. This one's gonna be oh gonna be hard to even use it because I like I'm gonna like it so much. I'm excited. I don't know about you guys. Come on, go back. Now before I do anything, I usually will turn the whole thing right side out, or at least at very least stick my finger in there to make sure that all all the way it is i'm just going to turn it right side out it's what i do it's a good time to have the elbow pillows wherever i put them there they are come here baby And I use my presser, saves my thumbs, and you know, my thumb is having a problem right now. If you have all your fabrics already cut, and then you just sew them all, it's much easier on the brain. You don't have to think as much. Anything we can do to make lives our lives easier. So I'm thinking about the question I'm going to ask for the giveaway. So I it's going to take me a little bit of time to turn this right side out and finish it up. And really before before I turn it, I do clip the corners. Once I determine that they're held and that they are stitched well. So if you put your finger in there and you don't, it doesn't pop out or any type of a turner, which I also like to use Appliquick rods for this. Is that what I used? Because they're long, they're long and slender, <laughs> like long slender fingers. 
And you don't want to use the, there's one end that's really pointy, you don't use that end. So this is, this tool has a kind of a dull point to it. And so it makes it so that you can reach in further and push things out. And then you have this end, which is rounded even more. Yeah, the AppleQuick product is great. Lots of uses for these. I could have left myself a little bit more turning room. I can make bow cozies out of what? Yeah, one of you had a bunch of fabric that you got. Was it a whole bunch of square or a whole bunch of pieced fabric? This You could turn them all into bow cozies. All right, I got to get serious. I'm just going to talk to you guys. This is the stuff that is edited out on not live video. So if you're watching this and it is not September 15th of 2022, and you're not seeing the live chat, you can go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Definitely better when your thumb isn't having issues. Oh, the Pioneer Woman fabric. Yeah. Another gift to make your sister. Is that who you made those placemats for? You have a turning chopstick. This is, this is, the pressers are great because it makes you like a super human strength thumb. And since this is the bamboo batting, it's not going to tear from us pulling and tugging to turn it right side out. So should I auction off the butterfly machine? Would you be interested in, in uh, having a chance to compete in an auction for my hand-painted butterfly sewing machine, which sews beautifully? And I have over 300 hours of painting on that machine. Batting fuzz flying through the air. <laughs> All right, now you leave yourself more room than I did. This is silly. So when I'm done, I'm going to put a coupon code in the school, as I mentioned before. If you're a member of the school, you can go in there and access the coupon. It'll be at the top of the news feed within five minutes after I go offline. And it is create.clairowley.com. Yay! That didn't take too long. I always feel like stuffing it and we'll have a ball, a square, a square ball. Now is when I use the Apple Quick. Make sure it's not the sharp one. And I pull out each of the points. You want to get them as pointy as possible because we're going to go all the way around and stitch this closed. Where are you, point? So just a little tapping that I'm doing inside instead of aggressive sliding and we can get that point really good because I clipped up to the point. My dog Chase is snoring really loud. I don't know if you can hear it. 
You having trouble getting into the school, Ellen? Maybe we need to schedule a, me go on your computer and help you get back into things. I think there was another one of you that needed a little help. Please don't hesitate to ask me for help, you guys. It's why I have a school. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now, just have to decide. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of a jester's hat, you know? Maybe you could make a, use it as a crown for Halloween. For a small child, you probably could because the little head wouldn't go in like that and you'd have a crown. But one of the things I like to do is I'm going to press with the presser and I will turn on the iron for this as well to make sure that the fabrics are lined up with each other as best as possible on the corners. <laughs> Bamboo bedding floats in the air. And this is not part bamboo. This is 100% bamboo. You don't want part of your... <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Oh, I need to eat soon. All right. So I'm going to turn on the iron. Don't I sound thrilled? <laughs> I don't know which, I think, the thing is when you're eating, it doesn't matter, I like both sides, but. So look at how nice that is. I'm gonna show you up close. I'm really thrilled. So half of the bowl, or two sides of the bowl, the strips are going this way, and on the other sides, they're they're going vertically. So horizontal and vertical strips. Isn't that cute? That'll make yours stand out from all the rest if you're selling your bowl cozies in uh, craft shows. The iron was not hot. All right, Ellen, I'll help you get going again. I love this. This is the June Taylor ironing board and I got it's it, I got it dirty. So I just covered it up. And I really don't like using it as a cutting board. So one side's cutting board and the other side's padding. And the reason I don't like using it as a cutting board is because I got it too hot and it kind of warped the, the board. I do steam, push steam through. You can see it rising. And one of, one of the best things for the liquid-based glue is to close up those gaps where you leave to turn fabrics right side out because you can actually make it as if it's already sewn, which I will show you in the close up. I feel like it's time to, I can iron my other bowl cozies because I washed them. So I don't know how many times I've washed mine but the bamboo batting is still just as puffy as it was the day I made them. And I think it's been two years. So. I want to do this a little bit better. You stained your bowl cozy? As I mentioned before, there is a video on the science of bowl cozies 
and the and fire dangers in my youtube channel i already did all the work it's an edited video so it's real quick and i also have a video on making the bowl cozies that's a lot quicker than today's so you might want to if you're going to make these in the future you might want to actually give yourself a i ironed it too much i ironed it all wrinkled so these apple quick tools help a lot for this as that's their that's what they're designed for is to help you smooth out fabric and i'm going to use the liquid based glue to put these to keep it together <laughs> get it together <laughs> it's gonna get even worse right i know it's like in the summer it gets light at 4 30 in the morning where we are Ugh. have the lid off So I'm putting a, a line of glue this time instead of a dot. Still like to spread that out to make it dry quicker. Smoothing out that opening. Especially if you're selling these or if you're giving them as gifts. If it's for yourself, you might go, ah, I don't care if there's a little wrinkle there. But if you're making them to sell you want to make your items stand out from everybody else's so on the isn't that cute you guys all right i'm going to use the pearls and piping foot to sew this together because I remember it being great for this, even though it's super thick. And the foot you were seeing me use is the satin edge foot. And I've got a line of the uh, Sharpie on the back of that, which I can wipe off with a little bit of nail polish remover. Uh, Liquid-based glue. So look for that logo on our site under supplies at creativefeet.com. Now there's a washer on this foot and if the washer's to the left your needle will be farther to the right if your washer's to the right your needle will be further to the left and you have the ability to also adjust needle position on your machine the pressure is set really loose on my foot right now lower the foot i'm going to bring the needle thread up because It's really short. Come on. When I'm working on a thick edge like this, it's always good to have both your threads pulled out, not start with a short thread. And then you also think, okay, we want to have only one possible spot where it doesn't look perfect. So that's where you'll want to start your stitch as well. But you don't have two places that you're concerned about. Now the seam allowance that I did was eighth of an inch seam allowance. I didn't use a quarter inch seam allowance. So if my needle is over here, I'm not going to have my fabric edges folded under. You want to make sure that the stitching line is going to, with the these fabrics brought together, that the stitching line is going to go across all layers. So I'm going to move my needle into the center. And that is good. So now the tunnel on the foot is going to ride right over and just keep that seam allowance, that eighth inch seam allowance becomes, I'll help you understand the science, show you something. Why don't I have any of that laying there? So those two seam allowances coming together 
when they're folded over, they become like a cord inside. So the foot is going to ride right over the edge of those two seam allowances. And it's going to steer it and keep it on the edge for you. And it's a good idea to go forward and in reverse to secure. So that's just that one spot. And I, and I want to kind of flatten it out so that I get my needle to line up on that. Sorry, my brain just reminded me of something. So bring your needle down in the point where the seam allowances come together and continue. But pressure is still light, lightest pressure and stitch length is still two and a half millimeters long. If your machine hesitates, you can use a longer stitch length. The shorter the stitch length, the less likely you are to have any puckering. But you don't want to go too short where it doesn't feed at all. Okay, once again, we're coming to the V, so we want to spread it out and on both top and bottom. No more regular bowl cozies for you, huh, Brenda? <laughs> the only thing that would have been better is to have both fabrics east. And then if my brain can come up with uh, um, other ways to do it, I actually think it would be neat to have like a little design for these flaps. Like on Valentine's Day, we could have a little applique for a, a heart for that. So I was supposed to only go up one inch on that first side for my shallower bowl. But I believe I have another bowl cozy in my immediate future. You can also use the crutch for the back of the pearls on piping foot or any other foot that you may be using to level out the foot on the corners and then it just kind of pops out the back side. What's nice about it is you're able to match the exact height of the fabric with your crutch. Okay, once again, flatten out my corners, my V's. Needle down. If your machine hesitates, you can increase your stitch length and then bring it back down again. Rather than pulling through. I got some batting floating around my nose again. But what's really nice is I have not had to even once think about how far I am away from the edge of that. And that's the pearls and piping foot doing that for me. It hasn't been hard on my hands. It's really easy on your hands. With normally it's not. <laughs> oh, if I only had a normal functioning left thumb right now. Okay, so all of my flaw-looking things are in the same exact spot. And now one more, and that would be the flap that I will stitch down. And why do I stitch one down? For a thumb spot, it keeps you from losing your bowl while you're walking across the room with it. This is perfect for my deep bowls that I did not have a bowl cozy for. I'm going to go get the bowl so that you know. And that's like the Corian bowls.
iron off. Oh, I love it, you guys. I'm so glad I got curious. Aren't you? Look at that. So I... I'll be right back. And then I'm going to have the question... So are you guys ready for the question? Be right back. One pattern, no special template, just good old fashioned measuring and all of these different bowls can be made or all these different size bowl cozies can be made, I should say. And all of them have the little thumb slot. So as I carry a bowl, my thumb is in there. And it makes it so I can really grip the bottom of the bowl. Without it, now this one's fine without it because it's so tall. But after a while, it'll start to soften up a bit. So I'm going to use the side that the, the corner that had the start and the closure and fold that over. And then you just stitch across. And the pearls and piping foot again for this. Even though it's really thick foot and that's thick fabric. So I'm going to lift lift the presser foot bar up to get it even higher and it's about one inch up from the point and here is another time when i would think my machine would need me to increase stitch length but the pearls and piping foot it just really settles the, gets you all lined up perfectly with your, what just happened? Foot's down. My machine is sounding bad. So the thread probably got caught on the bobbin winder again. Darn bobbin winder. can't have that absolutely not and this is live september 15th 2022 and yes i should use a seam ripper which i have somewhere 
I so rarely need them. I tend to not know where mine is. Okay, do over. Once again, we fold the flap over. You can see it's almost to the bottom. Of course, this is only visible because I pieced this. I'm going to go a quarter of an inch up from that. My thumb isn't that big. Now I want to use this bowl. Maybe that's going to determine what I cook for dinner. Up an inch. I go back and forth. This is going to be hot soup, probably. My thumb is partly holding the bowl, but this is also, you know, just for my mind's sake, I go back and forth maybe 15, 20 times. And that is 40 weight polyester thread. So there's no way that this is going to come loose. Now I could use a zigzag stitch, but it's not as strong. Frog tool. Oh, <laughs> Mary, you're so funny. There we go. Now we got a pretty. And I had the orangey color in the bobbin and the purpley color in the needle. So I got alternating colors. I keep trying to use my buttons. Why? No, not yet. Get ready. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to type? Are you ready to win the stupendous stitching book? And if you already own the stupendous stitching book, I will uh, give you the opportunity to switch if you're the winner. Lentil soup. I have lentils. I got a lot of broccoli and cauliflower. Some mushrooms. That sounds good. So my thumb is in there and now I can carry this. And the difference is I don't have to grab or try to hold the bowl. So it's while you're eating it, it's nice as well. And I never went back after I did this. I designed that for my friend Terry because she's only got use of one hand. So I wanted her to be able to use her bowl cozy and she does put the bowl. I think she said she takes the bowl and puts it. She cooks with it and puts the bowl in. I can't remember, but uh, it makes it so she can, without any use of her right hand, carry, take her bowl out of the microwave. Yeah, she must cook with it and it doesn't slip on her. So, or do you want the bowl cozy as your prize? No, it's my prize. So, uh, You guys ready to type? There's a 30 second delay. So I'm going to try to be patient and just know that when you see your answer, it does not mean that you beat everybody to it. In the live chat, it comes in and it's what I see. So because sometimes people think they won and they hadn't actually won. I don't want you to be disappointed. I will determine the winner right now or in 30 seconds or so by looking at the live chat that I can see in real time and you can't see in real time. So you're, you'll be seeing it 30 seconds after I've already seen it, which means there's a chance for 30 seconds worth of people typing before your answer is seen by you. So this is a three part question. What type of thread? batting and fabric well no that's not fair uh 
All right, why? Oh. All right, we'll do this. What is the best batting to use and thread to use for making a bowl cozy? Hurry up. And so you've, I'm looking at the chat, waiting. Nothing's come through yet. Who's going to win it? Boy, it takes a long time before anyone types. Oh, Lorenda, you knew what was not supposed to be used, but what should you use? Okay, who got it first? It's hard when the chat moves. Judy Chadwick. Making sure that we have a little bit of time. It looks like Judy Chadwick is today's winner. Double checking, triple checking so that I know I'm right. So she got it, the bamboo batting and the polyester thread. And just so you know, polyester is the type of material that they make micro microwavable things out of. So if they have like a cover to cover your food, it is PET is a polyester material or a type of plastic. So for those of you who are watching this and maybe questioning whether or not I'm correct on the science, there you go. Polyester, PET is, is the same kind of polymer used for polyester thread. Polyester batting would also be okay but the one that held up the best, looked the best after the test that I did where I put all the battings, I sewed a bunch of battings all together and then I put them through a bunch of different tests. The one that looked the best and didn't change in its appearance was bamboo. And some of these bowl cozies are two years old, still as thick as they were two years ago, despite being used over and over again and washed and dried. So con congratulations, Judy. Go ahead and send me a email at info at creativefeet.com with your information so that I can send you off your present and also for your prize. This is an opportunity for you to shop at creativefeet.com. Think of other things that you may want and we'll throw in free shipping for you. A lot of people take advantage of that and send us an email of what else you might want and also, if you're a member of the school, don't forget, there's going to be a coupon momentarily placed inside of the school. I'm going to go ahead and type the school's address in here again, but there is going to be a screen that's going to pop up at the end with all of the different ways to follow me and Creative Feet. Did not think you were supposed to use poly thread in the microwave. I know, Mary. Now you know you're fine to use it. In fact, you should really watch the video on the fire safety and understanding the principles behind that. But uh, inside of cotton batting, because cotton is uh, has cellulose in it, a sugar, it um, also has these little holes. So if you see cotton batting and it has little brown specks in it, that's... That's another area, another item that can, is most likely what catches fire because cotton is the most likely of all fabrics to catch fire or it'll catch fire all by itself. If you have a towel and you put it over a wooden banister on your patio, it can just catch fire. So be careful where you lay your cotton rags down and stuff and, uh, Congratulations once again to Judy Chadwick. She's today's winner. Even if you think you won after this is over with, you'll be able to look through the 
live chat probably tomorrow. It takes them a while to, sometimes it's immediately available on YouTube and sometimes not. Those of you who are watching on Facebook, uh, you'd have to go inside of our YouTube video to actually see the chat and, uh, and see that I'm telling the truth. Nor would I ever want to, you know, not have any of you ever win your prize. And Caroline was a dear friend of mine. It will once it, it's once again she autographed these copies for me, and I'm gonna autograph it as well. So, with that, if you are new to my channel, I sure hope that you'll take the time to subscribe today. Oh, I was gonna put in the school address. Tell you what, Amy, I thought you were gonna win it win again. You're fast. Welcome back. We missed you so much last week. Like we're missing Carleen today. <laughs> I forgot it's got its the batteries off again. So that's where you'll email me, Je Judy, on the contact form at creativefeet.com. Although I, I'm pretty sure we have you in our system. Your name seems very familiar. And for those of you wanting to join my school, this is the school address. Also, those of you who are members of the school, if you have been having a difficult time getting your notifications if you're not getting emails from the school or if you're only getting like a digest please go into the school and go into your settings which i would normally show you but i only have one monitor today because i destroyed the other one it fell over so when you're inside of create with claire rowley go to your go to there's a circle on the top right hand side of the screen and click on that and then go to your settings. And in, when you're in your settings, uh, if you see this orange yellow ish notification saying to send them a message because you're not subscribed to the news to the emails, make sure you do that. And I, I will be sending out a newsletter very soon to the entire to everyone that follows me, letting you know about this issue that has happened uh, the mighty networks was flagged as, as a not okay site to some of your email providers one being gmail so if you have a gmail account and you're not getting your emails it's because of that so um, once again i'll send out a newsletter soon but if you're not opening your newsletters you won't know so make sure that you uh, check within the school if you want to get want to make sure you don't miss anything going on inside of create with claire rowley Yep, Robin, you got it. You understand, but you got it really late because of the delay. And uh, Judy Chadwick is today's winner. If you like this video, go ahead and hit your like button. And uh, after the live chat is over, which is almost ending, and it is uh, September 15th, 2022, hit the like button afterward. That really helps the algorithm, helps me. And be sure to join Create with Claire Rowley. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure... I sure hope you do so today. Let's see, we got the outro. Hopefully next week we'll have smoother show. I apologize for not having access to my desktop to show you the school and hope that you'll forgive me. With that, I love you guys so much. Take care and I'll see you next Thursday.